Scott, go ahead and open up the line. Not yet, Dr. Gans. I'll introduce you when it's time. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, and welcome to this afternoon's press conference of the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. I'll now hand it over to our moderator, Patricia Gans, professor at the UCLA Schools of Medicine and Public Health and director of the Division of Cancer Prevention and Control Research at the Johnson Comprehensive Cancer Center. Dr. Gans. Thank you very much. Uh, it's my pleasure to moderate this press conference with three very interesting abstracts that uh, relate to issues that are of importance to breast cancer survivors. And our first presentation will be uh, the risk for developing new cancer in other, the other breast increased for survivors with BRCA mutation, presented by Alexandra J. Vandenbroek, who is a doctoral candidate at the Netherlands Cancer Institute. Uh, thank you for the introduction. So, the risk of, the risk of developing a contralateral breast cancer is higher than developing a cancer, a uh, first cancer for the general population. This risk is even higher for carriers of a BRCA1 and 2 mutation, and about three times higher than non-carriers. Although this is already known, there are some gaps in knowledge. There are no CBC risk estimates in a large unselected population. For the furthermore, factors which influence the contralateral breast cancer risk in BRCA carriers are unknown. So our aim of our study was to provide precise risk estimates of carriers uh, of uh, CBC risk and identify factors which predict the risk of CBC in this group of high-risk women. So we looked at it in our uh, BASM study, which stands for Breast Cancer Outcome Study of Mutation Carriers. This is an unselected study population, so we tested all patients of a consecutive series of breast cancer patients uh, for the BRCA1 and 2 mutations. Um, we included patients which were diagnosed under the age of 50 with invasive breast cancer between 1917 and 2003 in 10 different hospitals in the Netherlands. We included now 5,000 patients. Uh, of these, about 4% were BRCA mutation carriers, which were 3% uh, BRCA1 mutation carriers, and about 1% of BRCA2 mutation carriers. So in this slide, you see the risk for CBC for the BRCA carriers compared to the non-BRCA carriers. The gray line are the non uh, mutation carriers which have a cumulative 10-year risk of 6%. In the light blue line is the risk for the BRCA2 mutation carriers. We have a cum uh, cumulative 10-year risk of 11%, which was significantly higher compared to the non-carriers. In the uh, dark blue line are, is the risk for the BRCA1 mutation carriers. We have, we have an even more elevated risk of 20.3% which was uh, significant. So in the group of carriers, we look, looked at factors which could influence the risk for CVC. We first looked at the effect of the age of the diagnosis of the first breast cancer. In the gray line, you see the risk in carriers for the patients we are who were diagnosed between the age of 41 and 50. And you see they have a cumulative 10-year risk of 11.6%. On the other hand, the carriers which were diagnosed at a younger age, so under the age of 41 <coughs> in our populations, had a 10-year cumulative risk of 26%. This difference was significant. Furthermore, we looked at the uh, triple negative status of the first breast cancer. Triple negative are uh, tumors which had an estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and HER2 receptor negative tumor. Um, in the gray line is shown <coughs> the uh, carriers which have a non-triple negative first breast cancer. Their risk, their cumulative 10-year risk was 11.2%. On the other hand, the uh, uh, carriers with a triple negative first breast cancer had a 10-year cumulative risk of almost 90%. Although this was not significant, you see that the effect is most uh, strong in the first five years. When looking only at the first five years, the effect is significant. So to conclude, the 10-year cumulative risk for CBC for the BRCA1 carriers was 
the 10 year risk for the BRCA2 carriers is 11%. Furthermore, we were able to define subgroups of BRCA carriers with a decreased and increased risk. Our low risk subgroup were the patients with a non triple negative breast cancer diagnosed between the ages 41 and 50, which have almost similar risks <coughs> to the non carriers. The higher risk groups were the patients with a triple negative first breast cancer diagnosed between the ages 41 and 50, and the patients diagnosed with a first breast cancer under the age of 41. Okay, it should be taken into account that the numbers of carriers are still small in our study because we tested all breast cancer patients and there was only a prevalence of 4%. Though, if these results are confirmed in other studies, age criteria and receptor status of the first breast cancer may be included in guidelines for prophylactic measures and screening in the follow-up of BRCA1 and 2 mutation carriers. These guidelines are very important to provide carriers with best information and counseling. Okay. Thank you.